Claire B. Lang, Serious NASCAR Radio. A lot of people think you just go around the track and beat and bang and then it's over here, but it's more of a mental game. Do you know why you're so good here and is it a secret? And B, what do you think people don't understand about what it's like to race out here at Martinsville and be good at it? Quirky tracks have always worked for me and this track certainly is that. Uh, when I first came here the first year, year and a half, um, there's no way I thought this track would be one that I liked. But uh, in time and learning how to drive it, you know, there's just a, a there's one way to really get around here. And a lot of tracks have a lot of other options, but there's one very specific line you have to run. And when a guy finds it and he can set his car up to it, you, you go and go and go for years. And that's what Denny has been able to do, we've been able to do, Jeff has done. Uh, so I, I really think it, it falls into that category. Uh, you go to a big track and there's three or four lanes to run on. You can move around and find somewhere that works for your setup if you missed it, for your own driving style. That's not the case here. I mean, there's one way to drive this place. That's it. <laughs> okay, let's go all the, back, all the way in the back. Marty Smith and then Rusty and then Lee. Marty Smith, uh, ESPN, kind of two parts, Johnson. Uh, the first one is what qualities does Denny Hamlin have as a driver that make him good here? Maybe you share similar ones. And second, about Harvick uh, and the 29 guys, do you see uh, more uh, from the outside looking at them as a competitor, more of a mature maturity within that group? Um, Denny here, I would say uh, he, he has a very good decision-making process in the car. And that's not just here, but on all tracks. And I think that's why he is uh, a threat for a championship um, you know, last year, year before, and in years to come. Uh, there's just some guys that can process all of the inputs, stress, you know, excitement, pressure, car sensations, all that, and, and make good decisions. And Denny, Denny does that. Um, Kevin, you know, those guys, when I think back, over the course of last year's championship chase, they as a group, you know, as RCR, have come so far. Um, and then, you know, certainly Kevin, and, and Kevin's always been a championship contender. I mean, he's raced for championships and all the stuff he's grown up in, so it's not like it's a, it's a new thing, but um, they're in a position where he can show the, the kind of prowess he has to be a champion. And uh, he did that last year in the chase and put up a great fight. And uh, those guys you know, certainly have some momentum on their side right now. To you right here, and then to Lee. Rusty Ball, NASCAR Media Group. Back, you just uh, ask you to look ahead next week. Texas, first uh, night race. There's a lot of excitement around that uh, night race coming up, and uh, just your thoughts going there. My first thought is, what the hell are we doing this weird schedule at Texas? I mean, we practice on Thursday night and all the other stuff that's going on, so I'm still trying to get my head around that. Um, but we're, we're excited to go back. Texas, obviously, is a, a great um, spot for our, our circuit, a lot of great fans. Um, night races are always good. I hope it's warm. Uh, we have a chance where it could be awfully cold there. But I'm uh, looking forward to going back. You know, the, the Dallas-Fort Worth area uh, has been a, a great sport of NASCAR, and it, it'll be good. Go ahead, Lee, and then Nate. Lee Spencer, Fox Sports. Doesn't it basically come down to the fact that this is a rhythm track? I mean, you talk about finding that line, but it, once you get that line, isn't it about, you know, just getting into that rhythm? And um, second question is, it's April Fool's Day. What's your best prank ever, or has somebody pulled on you? Um, wow, I didn't realize it was April Fool's Day. Um, I, I don't even know what day it is. I just know it's Friday. <laughs> um <laughs> The, uh, I know it's Friday and we're in Martinsville. I mean, I lost track of what day is what a long time ago. It's, okay, where are we going this week? And that, that's just the way it's been for years now. But, um, except for my wedding anniversary, of course. The, uh, <laughs> um, the rhythm here, yes, it is very important to have that rhythm in, in required. And that's what makes this qualifying format for tomorrow so tough. I mean, it's hard enough to go a couple hours between your last lap and qualifying, and now we're going to sleep on it overnight. So tomorrow, um, I think it's it's going to be exciting to watch. It's going to be very uh, unpredictable to know who's going to back up their times. Um, so I, I'm ex you know, excited to see it, excited to be a part of it, although I'm very very much a rhythm guy that I think it might hurt me um, going into qualifying tomorrow. And then April Fool's joke, uh, I, don't, I didn't even know today was April Fool's Day, so I don't have one close by in my mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Nate. You said looking at the new point system looks daunting. Is Are there particular people you're picking out and saying, man, how are those guys going to get back to the top ten? And, and I, I don't know, maybe you just elaborate on how it's different and how it's how it's changed. Sure. I mean, when you're uh, 
know, 20 out or something, your first reaction is, oh, that's not bad, 20 out the way I've always known it. A few spots, lead a lap, you're golden. Now you look at it and you're like, wait a second, one point to lead a lap, one point per position. Um, you know, that's 20 points, real tough to make it up in a week. And so it's just kind of coming to grips with how it, how it works out. I'm really, if you're 20 down, you're really, I don't know, a couple hundred out or something. So it's just getting used to that format. So um, I guess the reaction between the, uh, the two thoughts, you're like, whoa, I'm, I'm in trouble. Johnny, go with Johnny and in with Joe. Go ahead, Johnny. Thank you. Johnny Buck with the Martinsville Bulletin. Jimmy, um, talk a little bit, if you would, about the importance of uh, being physically fit for this sport. You know, I'm, I know almost every driver has a, a pretty strict workout regimen off season and try to kind of maintain during the season. And then also, if you would, maybe the balance between the physical stamina in a car compared with mental toughness in a car during a race. Yeah, the physical side is, is important, and especially as these teams make the cars more durable, um, the tracks are faster, speeds are higher, tires produce more grip and can last longer. Um, you know, it, it just puts more of a demand on the drivers. We have a long schedule, um, and it requires you being fit year-round to stay on top of things. And to me, you know, the, the physical toughness um, comes hand in hand with the mental toughness you, know, you if you really are pushing yourself physically you learn a lot about your mental toughness and how to push through pain in different situations so um you know that 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 helps those two kind of go hand in hand and then your own mental toughness and how you deal with pressure is is a, a separate aspect i believe and you don't know what you're made of until you're really challenged and that, that's been something about myself i've been surprised with that through the challenges i've been able to respond and, and do what I need to, which I, I didn't know I had until a few years back. So uh, it's just something that you kind of trial and error, work, work your way through. Final question, Joe Menzer. Joe Menzer, NASCAR.com, right here. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not going to say anything about Kansas losing. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I'm looking at your record for Martinsville, and, I mean, you've done a lot, obviously, in your career, but, to come here, I guess the car broke the very first time you were here in 2002. And since Thank then, God it broke because we were running terrible. <laughs> but, but since then, you've never finished out of the top ten, never. Uh, you know, we're, when you think about that, how remarkable is that? And, and I mean, did you just feel that rhythm and, and, get, and get all that right away instantly here or, or what? No, it, I would say the first five or six races here, I was very insecure about my line and technique and what was all going on, but we still managed to pull out some good finishes. And I, I really probably need to put credit into Robbie Loomis's hands and Jeff Gordon's hands, um, setup wise, giving us a great starting spot. And Jeff would be on top of the board, qualifying up front, leading laps, a contender. And when we got started, our deal was until we outrun the 24, let's run their setup and let me figure out how to drive differently and, and run up to speed with Jeff. So I, I had that great tool and was very fortunate to, to have that. And Chad and I both knew that, that we had something pretty unique there to pull off of and we, we better use it to our advantage. So I'd have to say those early years was Jeff and Robbie and then uh, you know we, we kind of developed our own setups and, and things from there and, and have carried on. So I'm, I'm shocked to hear. I, I would think that you know, first two or three years, I would have been outside the top ten. And I heard that stat before I came up here this week and was pretty shocked to hear that myself. Jimmy, thank you so much. Good luck this weekend, and uh, happy April Fool's.